Good morning, my friend. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Boulder. Welcome to 28th and Pearl. Just got here a few minutes ago and lifted my banner. It's going to be a beautiful day here in Boulder. I don't know about the other days, but today is a nice day, uh, weather-wise. Of course, uh, in the spirit, it's also very nice because, uh, well, for me personally, uh, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior, so uh, it's always a great day in Jesus Christ, uh, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, or sins. Is it plural? Sin or sins? Whatever it is. <laughs> it's in the book of John there. Anyways, uh, this is just an intro to the chapter 22. We're on the last chapter of Revelation, so we're going to do that. In just a few moments here, I'm going to put my banner down. I like lifting my banner the moment I get here, if I can. Uh, it just makes me feel good and kind of sets things, sets the tone, I guess, for me. Uh, but I can't always do it, So, but today I could do it. So uh, it's going to be a busy day. You can see behind me, lots of people, lots of traffic. It'll be like this the entire day. Busy, 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 busy. All right, so uh, we'll see in a few moments, okay? When I put this down, I'll set up my tripod and do the sermon, right? Love you, man. My friend welcome to the channel again how y'all doing it's a great day in Jesus and uh, if you're not in Jesus it's a great day because it's beautiful here in Boulder uh, it's uh, the quiet before the storm tomorrow not tomorrow but Tuesday six degrees and snowstorm so uh, but today it's really nice and uh, crazy thing is this morning as I was getting ready to go out I felt quickened in my spirit to uh, make a cup of coffee and bring it out so that's what this is a cup of coffee uh, and uh, uh, so uh, the reason I said that is because we are in a constant training ground this you know this isn't the end of our life this is the beginning of our life as a believer. It is the end of your life if you don't believe Jesus Christ. So get saved, man. Don't mess around with your salvation. Eternal life is real. You're going to die and you're going to go into eternal life. And if you don't have Jesus, uh, it's not going to be good for you. But uh, talking to those who are believers, uh, we're in a training ground. This is like, uh, I'm military, so this is like boot camp. Uh, boot camp. Uh, we're not in the battle yet. We're pretending like we're in the battle. We're training in the battle. Uh, the battle is for us to be trained for what we're going to do next. Not that, not that there's battle in eternity after all this is made new, but uh, the battle uh, trains us in areas that uh, there's no way else to be trained by. It's kind of like until you're actually in the fire line, until you're out preaching the gospel, you don't know what it feels like to preach a sermon out in the public. Uh, if you've never stood on a stage behind a pulpit, let's say, and preached to your congregation, you don't know what it feels like. You don't know what it feels like. You know, I think, uh, you know, you can preach to uh, 20 people, you can preach to 100 people, you can preach to uh, 500 people, maybe a few thousand. Uh, one time, uh, I think, uh, I think it was only one time, maybe twice, maybe three times, I preached over 10,000 people. You know, when you look at 10,000 people looking at you, uh, it is uh, quite uh, a unique experience to say the least. But fortunately, I had already been preaching for a long time and uh, I had a message that God placed upon my heart. So I was able to deliver that message. Many times I preached to a congregation of a couple thousand and uh, a few times to four or 5,000. Uh, I've never, that, that's about it right there. I've never been a big public speaker. More of a one-on-one -on -one type of preacher. And uh, small groups, I've done a lot of small groups. You know, probably, uh, probably in my lifetime, probably well over uh, a few hundred small groups. Uh, anywhere from a few people to 30, 40, 50 people in a, in a house. And uh, so that's been my big uh, 
uh, probably my biggest uh, area of preaching before the public. And uh, now I'm on the street preaching the gospel. And uh, those who criticize or put down or critique the street preacher's message or the way the preacher holds his banner or the way the preacher delivers a sermon, and they have never preached out on the street in front of public, in front of the public. Uh, they don't know what they're saying. They're pretending like they know because, well, they preach in a church building and then therefore they sh you know uh, what they're going through. But uh, being out here with the sinners, because these are all sinners, but there's a few believers mixed in here, but in Boulder, they're not on Sunday. Sunday's out, there's a weird day for Boulder. And so uh, uh, criticizing somebody who is doing something that you're not doing is really not fair for the person that you're criticizing. And it's not fair for you. And the reason it's not fair for you is because you're sowing bad seed. Yeah, yeah. And maybe God's gonna take you out of that comfort zone that you're in and put you in an area that uh, you've been criticizing people in. Uh, you know, that happens a lot in the Bible. You know, if you give this, you're gonna get that. You know, uh, it's just kind of how it is, you know. And if you criticize, then people are gonna criticize you. So uh, let's all stop criticizing and putting people down in the body of Christ. Uh, God is working with us all. Uh, we're all, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, a part of the body of Christ, uh, Jesus is taking care of us. I understand there's a lot of scriptures to rebuke and reprove and to correct and all that stuff there. Uh, however, uh, that takes place when the Holy Ghost quickens you to go do that. Not on your own fleshly desire, not on your own understanding that you're going to rebuke them. Well, the Word says this, I'm just going to go do it. Uh, if that is fact, if that is true, and what I just said earlier is not true, and, but and you're just gonna, you just have a thought in your mind, and you read a Bible verse, and you're gonna go rebuke a preacher on the street because he said something that you didn't like or didn't sound right to you for some reason. Uh, you know, uh, I would caution you on that. Caution you on that. That's what I'm going to say. Just I caution you on that. Okay? Caution, caution, caution. Okay? Uh, because Jesus knows what's going on in his body. And if you think you have to take control away from Jesus so that you can go rebuke a preacher on the street or whatever, well, that's what's exactly what you're doing. You're taking authority from Christ and you put on Christ and you go pretend like you're Jesus. Well, you know, it would be better if you would take that same unction and go talk to a sinner and rebuke the sinner for not receiving Christ. That would be the best thing to do. Let Jesus correct his body. Unless the Holy Ghost has told you and directed you and has showed you clearly with Bible verse on how to and what to say to a preacher, preacher to correct him. Now you're not going to go on your flesh. You're going to go by the power of God and you're going to deliver a word to that preacher, for example. And if that's the case, then that preacher, because he is preaching the word of God, he's probably going to receive whatever it is that you are going to deliver to him. I get, uh, uh, I get uh, correction a lot, uh, but I pick up in my spirit, uh, those who are correcting me in the spirit, I correct myself. Uh, but those who are trying to rebuke me or correct me, and they are not of the spirit, I can tell the difference. I can tell the difference. And, uh, you know, that is not a... Uh, just, uh, you know, that's just what the Lord wants to share, everybody. Let's not... Put down the body of Christ. Let's let Jesus take care of his body and let us go out into the field and win the lost. Okay, it's more wise to win the lost than to rebuke those who are already saved. Jesus says, I left the 99 and go and went after the one. So that's what we should do. Let's us do that too, okay? Isn't that a deal? Uh, so therefore, uh, when you watch the YouTube videos, all your comments should be of edification and of exhortation and of, um, of comfort, not of rebuke. Okay? Go find the sinner 
who is preaching some ungodly thing. I was praying about a, a group of sinners that are so wicked and so vile in everything they're doing, and but they're lifted up high on very high statues, and they're called, their title is called Thought Leaders. Thought Leaders. Thought Leaders, that's a kind of a new phrase that started here probably 20 years ago or more, I don't know actually, but I started hearing it probably 20 plus years ago, maybe 30 years ago. Thought leader. They lead your thoughts into captivity. That's what they're doing. And they're, they have uh, books. They have uh, public speaking events all over the world. They have uh, seminars and rallies and all kinds of uh, stuff out in the world. And people flock to their conferences because they're so wise. They've got multitudes of, of uh, audio uh, programs all over the world. There's a, uh, uh, there's a company who sells uh, massive amounts of thought leader material. Those are the people you should go against because they are shaping the thoughts of the world and they're taking people into the Antichrist. Now they don't know that. They think they're helping mankind. They think they're helping mankind, but they're not. They're deceived. So let us not tear down the body of Christ. Let's go after the thought leaders. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can uh, stop uh, by your power, Holy Ghost, stop criticizing and putting down the body of Christ. And we can begin um, uh, preaching to the thought leaders of this world. Uh, those who are leading people captive, those who are uh, doing great harm in holding people captive from receiving Christ. And I thank you, Lord, that we have put on the armor of God, that we have the helmet of salvation. We have the thoughts of Christ. Our heart is filled with the word of God, the word of truth. And our lips, our tongue speaks the word of truth. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give us the power to go out and witness, to preach, to minister to those thought leaders in the world, wherever they are, may be at this day. And uh, we thank you, Lord, and we give you all the glory for what you're doing, even today, in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. So that's the short part of the video. If you want to click off, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, uh, that's kind of a little exhortation that I do in the first part of the video. Uh, that's uh, 1 Corinthians 14, if you're wondering what verse I'm using for that. 1 Corinthians 14 is after 1 Corinthians 13, which is after 1 Corinthians 12. <laughs> 12 is the spiritual gifts of the Holy Ghost. 13 is the chapter on charity. It's not the chapter on love. That's a perverted version. That's a perverted chapter. So if you're reading the Bible that says love is chapter 13 and they took charity out, I would take that Bible and throw it in the trash can because that Bible is going to lead you astray. Not today, not tomorrow, but eventually, and it may not even be you, but it'll be the people that you're teaching. It'll be your children. It'll be generations down the road. Because if you keep sowing the seeds of corruption, corruption will be a harvest in your genealogy, in your, your line of family. So take authority. You dads and you moms, take authority in your life because you're training children, but you're not just training the children that you have in front of you, you're training their children, and their children's children, and their children's children. Right? So if you sow 1 Corinthians 13, and oh, this is the love chapter, you are sowing a seed of corruption. It is charity. That is the proper word to be used, charity, in 1 Corinthians 13. And I understand what all but charity means. No, you don't get what I'm just trying to say. You tr See, you immediately rebuke me because you don't listen to the Spirit of God in your heart. You just think you know what's going on. Well, stop thinking for a moment. Slow down. Be silent before the Lord. Be humble. Quit thinking that you know it all. You know, maybe right now it looks like I'm coming across as some big mouth know-it-all. But, you know... Uh, this is what happens when you turn a camera on and you're ready to preach the gospel. You have a, a something comes over you, it's called the Holy Ghost, and uh, you deliver a message based on what the Holy Ghost has put in your heart. None of this information, none of this talk that I've been saying since I started is coming from my brain. 
I had no idea what I was going to say. I know the message I'm going to preach, but we're not there yet. Amen? I love you, man. I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't love you. I wouldn't be doing this video, this message on camera, if I didn't love you. Because I don't, this, this is difficult. This is not easy. It's very, very time consuming. But I'm doing it because the Holy Ghost said to me, probably two years ago now, that I want you to start preaching a sermon on the video and post it online. And I had to think about that for a while because I knew that it was very time consuming. Every video is probably two or three hours worth of my time. Some videos I'm trying to shorten it down as you see a lot of the videos nowadays are much shorter or not shorter but they're not as detailed with all the Bible verses in it. I'm just, it's just too much time commitment but I'm at least doing the message. Okay. So anyways, we got a person over here doing her deal. I'm going to set this down. Alright, so uh, this is week 22 of our sermons. I have a sheet of paper here because uh, I wanted to talk on Thanksgiving in Jonah. Uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2, and uh, I think it's uh, no, just chapter 1 and chapter 2 in the book of Jonah. Uh, Jonah is the one who uh, God called, and then he fled from the presence of God, and, you know, a great fish was prepared for him, and all that kind of stuff, right? He's the one that went to Nivea, okay? Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now, but that's something that maybe you want to jot it down to go back and read Jonah 1 and 2. I think there's only four verse, four chapters. I'm not sure. If, I think there's only four. Uh, there might be more. Let's see. Jonah is, uh, yeah, it's only uh, it's four chapters long, but j chapter 1 and 2. Okay? So that's a little uh, word to, uh, to somebody. Check it out. Maybe God's going to say something through that, those two chapters in Jonah, J-O-N-A-H, Jonah. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> keep wiping this beard. I don't mean to do that all the time, but it gets in my mouth, and it just, I, I try to put lotion on it to keep it away from my mouth, but it gets in my mouth. And uh, the reason for the beard is for breakthrough and overcoming. That's Numbers 1330. Uh, we are believing for breakthrough. We're not there yet. But uh, a lot of people say, oh, you might, you're going to have breakthrough. I'm going to have breakthrough. It's just when we're going to have breakthrough is the problem. <laughs> you know, I know we're going to have breakthrough. That is a given. I have faith for breakthrough, but the timing for breakthrough is in God's hands, not John's hands. And so uh, what do you do? You stay after it. You keep pressing onward to the high calling of God on your life. You press onward. You have a course to run. You stay on that course. You don't alter your course. You don't go run somebody else's course, you run your course all the way to the end. And right now, the course that I'm on is called Breakthrough and Overcome. And uh, one of the things that you need to have in your arsenal of tools and weapons is to hear the voice of the Word of God. If you can't hear the voice of the Word of God and you're not willing and you're not obedient, you will struggle and you may not overcome. You may not overcome. And so the Holy Ghost has had us for the last 22 weeks in the book of Revelation. And the purpose and the intent of doing it this way we've been doing it is to uh, train up our spirit in such a way by the power of God so that we'd be more willing and more obedient to hear the voice of the Word of God and to do it. Not just hear it, but do it. Be a doer of God's Word, not just a hearer only. Amen? Just like this coffee cup I brought today. I heard the voice of the Word of God speak to me and says, bring a cup of coffee. And I thought, why would, I don't need any coffee. I don't want, you know. And I thought, and then quickly I was, I brought to my mind that when 
and the phrase that I use, not for everybody, but the phrase that I use is when I think of it, I do it. When that thought comes to me from God to go get a cup of coffee and bring it with you, I do what I think because it's I'm in training. I'm always in training. I don't take it lightly. I am constantly in training because the voices that are out there in the world are not going to diminish. They're going to increase, increase, and increase. And if you're not increasing in your ability to hear the voice of the Word of God, you're going to, that voice is going to just, it, just receive training by the Holy Ghost. That's His job. He's our comforter. He's teaching us the Word of God. He gives us the power to do what we're supposed to be doing. Anyways, just be alert to that, okay? Hang on a second. Since I got my coffee and it's still hot. Hallelujah. I buy very cheap coffee. I was figuring it up this morning. A lot of people spend a lot of money on coffee, coffee drinkers. I mean, I used to drink a thermos or two every day in the truck, but now I'm only down to one cup and occasionally two. So this, today we'll have two cups of coffee. So I was pricing out what I spend on coffee. And uh, I don't go out for coffee. I don't spend any money out there on coffee. I don't buy lattes. I don't buy espressos. Uh, I, if I do have a cup of coffee out, on the, out in the world, uh, it's just a plain black cup of coffee. It's the cheapest. Uh, and, uh, but that's very rare, very, very rare. And so uh, uh, I was figuring it up. And uh, what I spend is uh, uh, 35 cents uh, per uh, cup of coffee, 35 cents. I think, uh, uh, let me kind of rephrase that. Uh, most people, uh, Starbucks is about 15 to $20 for a pound of coffee, I think. It's been years since I've been got buying any coffee, but I used to buy it all the time when I was in the truck. And, uh, but the coffee I buy is only uh, uh, $5 and, 70 cents a pound the coffee out at five dollars and 70 cents that's pretty good price i thought for custom organic coffee and uh so that's i think it's organic not sure on that but uh, it's good coffee so anyways i just thought i'd say that i watch all my pennies i watch all my dollars and i watch all the money coming in and out of the ministry uh, the reason i watch and i'm so faithful in being a faithful minister financially is because I wanted this ministry, this street ministry, and our missionary church to be good ground. Now, if you say it's not ground, John, it's soil. Well, that lets me know the book, the Bible, that you're reading. Bible means book. And that book that says soil, throw that one out too, because it's ground. Soil and ground are not the same words. People think they are because people don't study definitions. They don't study the original roots of words. Ground is the proper word. That's the proper seed to sow in that ground. Jesus said the word of God is like a seed that you sow. And there's four types of grounds. So you want to sow into the good ground that produces a harvest. 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold. Okay? These are little bits and pieces that go over people's head because they really don't pay attention. They're too preoccupied with the cares of the world. That's also a ground. The Word of God gets sowed in them. They receive the Word of God, but the cares of the world choke it out. We've been doing this for 22 weeks in Revelation. Have you allowed the cares of the world for 22 to... 24 weeks since June, June 19th is when I started this. Sunday, June 19th, when we started our very first chapter one. Chapter one, we started June 19th. Sunday, right here, across the street, actually. <clears throat> I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to finish. I hope you listened to uh, yesterday's podcast. I hope you listened to the, uh, maybe watch the video, the Sunday prayer letter video that I did on the podcast. I hope you get our Sunday prayer letter by email. You know, go to John, C-H-O-Q-U-E.com, johnshuck.com. It's a C, not an S. It's a French name. And, uh, you know, sign up for the email. You know, there's two reasons for that. 
and one of them is uh, it gives you a point of contact to remind you to pray for Preacher John, for this street ministry, pray for his missionary church. And then as you're praying for that street, this street ministry, uh, maybe other street ministries will come to your mind. So you start praying for all the street ministries that you know every time you see the Sunday prayer letter come up on your inbox. I think it's a great idea, but so far only a handful of people have taken me up on that. Only a handful. What about all the hundred, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of other people? I have over 100 people watching the video every month. 100 people, 100 plus. Oh well. Oh well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing out here on the street. Thank you for doing what you're doing on the video channel. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to blessings upon every street preacher, every minister who's ministering today, be it in a church or out on the street or out in the park, wherever they may be, out in the truck stop, in the rest areas, out on the docks, out in the fields, Lord. Holy Spirit, I thank you for giving them the power to preach the Word of God, to be a witness, to be a light in the dark world, to be able to deliver the Word of God cleanly, clearly, and perfectly. <laughs> in your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. So the foundation that we stand upon is the Lord Jesus Christ. No other man can make another foundation. The foundation we stand upon is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> On that foundation, uh, we have a title structure, and that is uh, the first title is the, uh, the Word of God. The Word of God. That's the name of Jesus Christ found in Revelation 19, 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Into that is our breakthrough and overcoming title that I mentioned. It's Caleb 13, that's uh, number 13, 60, we're 16, we're... 13, 19, whatever it is. Uh, sorry. That Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then our Sunday prayer letter is our third title on our foundation. And that is Revelation chapter 22. Before we get into Revelation, we've been reading a preface, and uh, that is Malachi chapter 4, and we read the whole chapter. It's only six verses long, and we'll do it right now. Out of the King James Bible, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. <clears throat> and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that I shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. In your name, Jesus, we pray, and we glorify you with your word. We magnify your word above all thy name. Hallelujah for your word, Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> all right, Revelation chapter 22. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to read through the 21 verses, and we'll come back to one, and we'll talk about it. All right, Revelation chapter 22, last chapter of the Bible, last chapter of Revelation, last chapter of the New Testament. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, chapter 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and of either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, 
and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads <laughs> and there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither the light of the sun for the Lord God giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever verse 6 and he said unto me these sayings these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the Holy Prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he then to me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Verse 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And he that is just, let him be, no, and he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. For behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever may, loveth and maketh a lie. Verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whoever so and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, shall God take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we do say, Come, Lord Jesus. And we do say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. There's an ex street preacher that just drove by. He quit. Yeah. Stayed out here for probably a year, year and a half, and quit. Says, I don't see a reason to do this, I guess, or just quit. Quit, quit, quit. People quit the ministry. Oh well. Oh well. But I have not quit the ministry. I've been preaching for 48, 49 years. And I'm excited about celebrating my 50th come another year or so. But 2023 will be my uh, uh, 20, uh, 49th year of preaching the gospel nonstop. Nonstop. I've never stopped being a preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's not me. That's a gift from God. I tell you, Satan has done everything in his power 
to get me to stop. But uh, for some reason, uh, I have not stopped. And I'm not going to stop reading the Word of God either, just because I've read it a few times. Too many people get bored with the Word of God. Well, I don't want to read it. We've already read it. I've read it one time. Why do I got to read it again? I've heard that from many people. I read the Bible, as they say. Why do I got to read it again? I read it once. I remember what it says. Do you? Oh, well. So don't read the Bible anymore. See what happens to your life. Come talk to me in about 10 years if I'm still around. I should still be around, but I don't know that. <laughs> Come Lord Jesus. This could be the day, right? Any day. But he says you come like a thief in the night. It's not nighttime. But it could be because it's nighttime on the other side of the world. I don't know. <laughs> oh, sorry. I hit the... <laughs> Dancing around here, I hit the tripod. You guys okay? <laughs> All right, chapter 22, hallelujah for 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear and crystal. This is he, this is the angel uh, showing John this. And he, the angel, showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So let me just talk about this a little bit. Uh, the angel is showing John these things, and the thing that catches my attention is river. Uh, river catches my attention. He didn't say a, a sea of water. He didn't say an ocean of water. He didn't say a lake of water. He didn't say a creek of water. He didn't say a trickle of water. He didn't say a tributary of water. He didn't say uh, he didn't say an aqueduct of water. He didn't say a, uh, a vase full of water. He said a river of water. A river of water. I think that's very interesting to me. A river. Do you have the river of life flowing in you? Are you in the river? Yeah. You know, there's a river that's flowing around the world right now. Has been for decades. Many believers get in the river. <clears throat> they don't get out of the river. <clears throat> Other believers, Christians, born-again people, they mock the river. They say, that's not true. That's from Satan. That's what they say. I've heard them say that about me. I'm in the river, praising God, laughing and having a good time in the river of life. I have the joy of the Lord in my spirit. And believers knock me not, uh, not knock on me, bang, bang, bang. They uh, mock me, they knock on me, they, they criticize me, they put me down because I receive the river of life that throws from the throne of God. I said, that's not of today, that's later on. Really? Well, I don't know. I'm in the river of life. How about you? So that's why it catches my attention because I've been in the river since about the mid-90s. How long ago is that, you know? 25 years plus, and it's been wonderful. And guess what's happened in 25 years? My ministry has just skyrocketed. It's just been going up and up and up and up. And Satan's been on my tail for the first probably 10 years of those 25 plus years. Satan's been right on my tail trying to grab at me, grab at me, grab at me as I'm going up. It's like that jet liner is going across the sky that tail that's off the jet. He's trying to grab that, that uh, you know, the jet liners in the sky. You can see the jet and the contrail. And uh, so he's like grabbing the tail of that contrail. But he can't get a hold of me. But I stay in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the river. River of water, of life. Life. Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Where's the more abundance coming from? Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Could that be the river of life? Yeah, river of water of life? I don't know, could be. Clear as crystal. Yeah, clear as crystal. Isn't that funny how that was the floor that John was standing on in the temple? It was clear as crystal. 
How about that? That's interesting too. Very fascinating. You know, uh, I'd like to share something real quick here that I watched last night. Uh, sometimes on Saturday nights I watch ministry and look around stuff. So a brother in Christ, God bless you Brent, sent me a video on uh, the 12 foundations of the New Jerusalem. <laughs> and uh, the video is really interesting. It's not very long. It's only like six, seven minutes. So, you know, he mocked me, cussed me out. They know what I'm doing. Just because I'm not flying a big old Jesus bias right there. Anyways, he was saying that those gemstones, those precious stones that were selected by God are the only uh, stones that when light is shown on them, they turn and change into different colors and forms and fashions. They, they are absolutely breathtaking. Where the gemstones that people on earth uh, exalt and magnify are when the light is shined on them are dark and black and gray and of no color of whatsoever. And that's like the diamonds and the rubies and the garnets. And, different things that people use in, in uh, jewelry. It's worthless. It's worthless. Anyways, God has it all figured out. And you know, the interesting thing of what he said was that it's only been recent, and I, how, I don't know how long is recent, but it's only been recent that uh, gemologists or people who study that kind of stuff uh, knew this. Uh, but the Bible is written, you know, couple thousand years ago and nobody on earth knew that I've had people say how come there's not diamonds in heaven because diamonds don't reflect pure light they actually but you say well they reflect they ref yeah they reflect a, a light and shadow the Sun who is symbolizes Christ but after all this is gone that Sun's going to disappear so diamonds do not show the light, the pure light of God. It does not reflect the pure light of God. It only reflects the earthly sun, a diamond. Ah, just interesting. It's really interesting how God got it all figured out. But a lot of people don't believe it, and they're going to go to hell, and they're going to go on to judgment, and they're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. So let's keep preaching the gospel. Let's don't hide someplace. Be visible. Put on a hat that says, trust Jesus or Jesus saves. Put a pin on your shirt or your, or your dress. You know, put a, put, a, put a logo on your t-shirt. Put a logo on your coat. Be advertising for Jesus everywhere you go. Don't be hidden. Because if you're hidden, you're not talking. Unless you're talking all the time. Unless you're always placing gospel tracts all the time. That's, you know, maybe you can do that. But too many believers are constantly hidden. They're hidden, they're hidden, they're hidden. They hide constantly. And they don't even know they're doing it. They don't even know they're doing it. <laughs> there a lady, whoever's in that car, was across the street, stopped at the light, and was honking across the street. I didn't really pay attention. And they are honking across the intersection, and then a great big old grin and smile <laughs> as they went by. Isn't that great? People know what you're doing out here. You don't know what's going on in their life. They could be struggling. And when they see you preaching on the street in your city, in your country, they say, man, oh man, I'm not the only one. There are other people out there working for God. That's why it's so important not to quit the ministry, like that brother who drove by. Quit the ministry. How sad. How sad. But that's what people do. They, they do what they want to do. They don't do, care what God tells them to do. They do what they want to do. And all too often what they want to do is of the world and not of God. Most people spend their entire life serving the world and just a tiny sliver serving God. God. That's why the tithe was instituted, to get people used to giving a part or a portion of their life to God, pointing to the time that Christ would come and that no longer 
is you argue to tie. You're to give it everything, 100% of everything you own, 100% of your life, 100% of your thoughts, 100% of everything that you are, you give to God. But people rebuke that. They say, no, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. All right, oh well. I was on the floor this morning crying, my kitchen floor crying to the Lord. I said, Lord, my whole life is yours. Every day, every moment is yours. Nothing's mine, Lord. I don't want this life. I don't want anything in this world. I just want to do what you want me to do. I want your calling. I want your spirit. I want to do what you want me to do, Lord, every single day. My life is yours, Lord. Couldn't stop crying because God is everything to me. This world is nothing. The only reason I'm here now is because I'm trying to win the lost. That's what I'm doing here on the video. I'm not teaching the Bible. I'm trying to get you excited to go out and preach the gospel to somebody who is not saved. You can read the Bible on your own. You can get the Bible and read Revelation 22. You don't need me. I'm nobody. I'm just another believer out there doing something for God. So you do something for God. That's the purpose and the intent of all these sermons that I do. Go do something. Get to work in the field. The people are too busy. Cares of the world. 75% of the believers, if you were to take the four grounds that God talked about, the parable of the sower, 75% didn't produce a harvest. 75% if it was 25, 25, 25, and 25. Doesn't say that, but if you were to look at it that way. That one, that good ground could only be 5%. Could be 2%, could be 1%, it could be 10%, it could be, I don't know. Could be 50%, I don't know that. It just says there's four grounds, and one ground you sow the seed there, and you know, you know the parable of sower, you can read it for yourself, you got a Bible. Amen? This is all about the river of life. If you get into that river, your life will change as a believer. You don't know where the river is until you're saved though. You don't know it exists. Get in the river, man. We've been preaching on the river for decades now. Fire of God, river of life. That's where the joy of the Lord is. You think the river is, is stagnant and polluted and filled with uh, water skippers <laughs> and mosquitoes? No, it's clear as crystal, the river of life. Clear as crystal, river of life. What's in the, what is, what is life? Life is joy, life is laughter, life is fun, life is, life is exhilarating. Life. Life is exhilarating. Look at all these people here sitting, looking at their cell phone, as if that is the most important thing in their world. And to many, their cell phone is the most important item in the world. They live their life on their cell phone. You can see them. And they're driving down the road, cell phone. I see police officers, Boulder police, on their cell phone, looking at it while they're driving down the road, breaking the law. A police officer, a law enforcement officer, breaking the law that he's supposed to enforce. But guess what? Because they do it, they don't enforce it. That's how it works. If you don't enforce the law, then guess what? You, and you, no, if you break the law, then you're not gonna enforce the law. If you uh, adhere to the law and you obey the law, then you're gonna enforce the law. Just like the Bible, the law of the Word of God. If you uh, live by the Word of God, then you're gonna, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. Got people looking at me. Oh, man. Praise God. Praise God. All right. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God. Proceeding out of the throne of God. The throne of God. Remember, he talked about the throne. Round about the throne were the 24 elders. Round about the throne were the 24 thrones. Round about the throne were the four beasts. 
round about the throne, people by the multitudes threw their crowns down and their bowed down and worship no number thousands upon thousands tens of thousands and tens and tens of thousands millions upon millions there's a lot of believers are going to be in heaven a lot of believers in heaven you know there's been a lot of people who lived on earth but only a small small portion of all who've lived on earth will be in heaven And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The Lamb. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It's going to be on my 2023, 2023 banner, my 23, uh, year 23 you know, banner. The banner is called God Bless You. Yeah, I title all my banners. This is, I have had one for 19. 20, 21, 22, now 23. I have a new banner, a new message every year. I'm excited about the new message. All in the Bible, all in the Word of God. It's not my phrases, it's the Word of God on the banner. Word for word, verbatim. I don't put my own twist on the banner. I put the Word of God. I sow the pure Word of God because I'm in the pure river of water of life. Even now, even now, do you think the water is turned off and there's no water coming from God? Don't think so. Lamb of God. And in the midst of the street of it, in the street, there's streets in heaven. Are we practicing now being on the streets of our city? I'm on the side of the street. I am like a tree of life in this street here. That's what it says, right? And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. Jesus likens the person who is filled with the word of God, who speaks the word of life, as a tree of life. Tree of life. So I am on the this river, this street, I'm a tree of life to all those who want to partake of the tree of life. Many don't. Oh well. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life. That's a desire of mine. On either side of the river, on the side of the street, like on that side of the street, there'd be another banner. And on that side of the street, another banner. And on that side of the street, another banner. Four preachers on the same corner. But everyone's too busy. I had one brother come up here a month ago. I haven't seen him again. Oh well, you know, he's preaching somewhere else, I guess. You know, I don't know. It just blows me away. But, oh well. That's why they probably don't watch my videos anymore either, because I'm always talking about it. In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. I yield the fruit every month here on the street. I'm here month after 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 month. How many months do I have so far? Uh, 36, uh, 40, I see 36, or 7, 8, 9, 40, over 40 months on the street bearing fruit. I understand what they're talking about here. I'm not, you know, just giving a, a analogy of, because that's what you're doing on the street. You're bearing fruit. You're giving the fruit of the word of God to people. Now they can either partake of it or drop kick it across the street. Or take it and give it to somebody else? I don't know. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. The Bible likens us to trees, the believer as a tree. The 
The Bible likens the sinner as a uh, flower, a plant, a little flower, who lives for a while and dies when the heat of the sun comes. But a tree lives on through the heat, through the cold, through the winter, through the summer, the spring, all seasons, the tree stands mighty, provides shade in the summertime, provides an area for birds to make their nest and to bear their young, a tree, for children to hang their swing in a tree, hallelujah, trees to bear wood, to make furniture, to have warmth in their fireplace, you know, it's kind of a weird way of looking at it, but it's came to my mind. We're like a tree of life. We're like a tree of life. And healing, so if we're like a tree of life, do you provide healing to people? Do you ever preach on the scriptures on healing? Do you ever lay hands on the sick to heal the sick so that they can recover? Should. It's in the Bible. But all too often, churches teach, oh, that's all gone away. God doesn't heal anymore. It's in the Bible, but they're not going to say that anymore. How sad, right? I've been healed many times. I thank God that I, God is a healing God. And it's for today, 2022. And it's for tomorrow. And there shall be no... Okay, verse 3. And there shall, there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. Verse 4. And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. Shall see His face. Moses said, I want to see your face. God says, no, if you see my face, you die. So put Moses in the cleft of the rock, put his hand over Moses, and walked by Moses. Moses' prayer was answered. And God didn't answer exactly the way he said it, because there are times when we ask for things or we pray about things that we really don't know what we're asking or praying for. It's just a thought. So, but now that prayer has been answered. Moses has seen the face of God. He's in heaven. He sees the face of God. If you don't believe Moses is in heaven, well, whatever. And so today we can see the face of God and not die because we are covered with the blood of the Lamb of God that washes away our sin. And as the Antichrist tries to show a face, an image of the beast, so we can worship that image, and as the beast tries to put that mark in our foreheads, God is putting a name, his name in our foreheads, and his face that we can see face to face. You see what Satan is doing? He's mimicking God, he is mocking God trying to pretend like he is God. Modern textual critical Bibles blur the boundaries of Satan and God and kind of intermix Satan, Lucifer, and God to the point where some believers preach and teach that, now this is mainly cults, but I've heard Christians say it too. Christians, that Jesus is really the brother of Satan. Yeah, that's pretty much what Mormons teach, but that's, that teaching has gone all over the world. It's a lie, right? It's a deception. To know the Word of God. <clears throat> and they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, no night, no night. I'm gonna stop right there, no night. I think that's interesting, no night, because Jesus says, I come, I will come like a thief in the night. A thief in the night. So he's called me all kinds of nasty names, that's good, right? So God knows what's going on in that group of, in that Jeep over there. All those guys, those college students that think they're invincible. I'm out here. 
being a witness, being a light in the dark world. But the Bible says, this Bible says that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those that are perishing. Corrupt texts don't say that. It says the gospel is foolishness. It is, huh? That's the Bible a lot of people read. It says the gospel is foolishness to those that are perishing. So what Bible are you reading? Are you reading a Bible that says the gospel is foolish? Or are you reading the preaching is foolish? It's two different doctrines there. Very subtle, very slight movement of the words. But that doctrine that says the gospel is foolish, this doctrine says that preaching is foolish. You say, well, John, you're carrying a little too far. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to carry it all the way to heaven, man. I ain't going to stop. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we are heaven bound. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to grab your body and you're going to hug it and you're going to love on it. You're going to clothe us with the wedding gowns. We're going to be arrayed and adorned with the beauty of God, the light of God, the color and the majesty of Almighty God. I thank you, Lord, that you have a place in heaven for your saints. I praise you, Lord, for that. And I thank you for saving people, even today, even in that Jeep that went by. Thank you, Lord, for protecting me out here, too. Because there's a lot of people who hate what I do. So I thank you, Lord, for protecting me. And I'll just give them love. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So if you want to have a takeaway or recap, I'd get into uh, Revelation chapter 22 and think about the river of water of life. Think about that river. Mull, mull it around a little bit. Talk to God about it. Find some other Bible verses about the river. And along with that, the tree of life. Put the river and the tree of life together and kind of see where you fit in. It's a good place to meditate on for today or whenever you're watching this sermon. Tomorrow is Monday the 28th of November. I'm actually going to, I've already scheduled that as a personal day off. I've got some business I need to take care of. It's going to take all day. So that's just the way it is, right? And the, But uh, I need to take care of that business because on Tuesday I'll be preaching. Tuesday I'll be over there at Folsom and and uh, Folsom and uh, Valmont over by the 7-Eleven on Tuesday, Tuesday the 29th. <clears throat> then on Wednesday I'll be at uh, I think I'm going to be at Walnut and Broadway. On Thursday, I'll be at 17th and Arapaho by Boulder High School. Then on Friday, I'll be in Denver. Then on Saturday, I'll take the day off uh, as a Sabbath rest in the Lord. Then come the following Sunday, next Sunday, right here, December 4th, we will begin a brand new series called Glorifying God. There's about 25 verses that we're going to go over for about four weeks. We're going to preach on a different verse every single day and uh, seven verses per week and we're going to preach on each verse that talk about glorifying God. That starts next next, uh, next, uh, next Sunday, December 4th. So uh, that's it for today. So God bless you, man. I hope there was something here that you can take away and uh, use in your life and your ministry and your family. I love you, man. Take care. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.